in Philly, you know what to expect. Cold temps, and we've got them. But the skies are clear tonight at Lincoln Financial Field. The scene in South Philly a few moments ago. Boy, the city of brotherly love is fired up. They're saying fly, Eagles, fly, as they get ready to match up with the Washington football team. A look at Washington as they come onto the field. Heineke. This one complete to Curtis Samuel. And they work this well upfield across the 45. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. First down, Heineke. And they will not get the connection there. It's incomplete. No sense risking anything there on first down. Even though he's still in the pocket, he had a receiver out to his side, so he'll just put that in a spot where the only people who can make a play on it are the trainers and the coaches. Well done. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Throwing. Heineke. And that nearly an interception here on his opening drive, but he gets a reprieve. It's third down. It certainly didn't appear that that's where he wanted to go with the ball initially, so he tried to get something out of it by dumping it off to his running back unsuccessfully. So now third and ten. They had the big play to start the drive, but two incompletion sets. To the air again, Heineke. Slings this deep for McLaurin. Looking for McLaurin, and he's got him. Touchdown, Washington. Terry McLaurin, 52 yards. And Washington has taken a first quarter lead. And he knew he was going to take a shot in the pocket. He did, but he also found a way to get it into the end zone. And that has to ease the pain a little bit of the shot he took, didn't it? Being able to throw it into the end zone for a touchdown. Point after, right down the middle. And it's now a 7-0 game. is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Fielded just outside the goal line. And taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. The Eagles just about set to go to work on offense. and the Eagles come up here first and 10 at their own 21. They'll fake the give to Sanders, and now Hurts. Oh, he's going to take a shot right away. And that will be incomplete. Would have been a big hitter if they had connected. Instead, it's second down. Nice play there to force the incompletion. And to me, one thing's for sure. When you're the underdogs and you're playing on the road, you absolutely have to get takeaways. You've got to get the ball from them. Yeah, win that turnover battle is going to be key. They didn't get one there, but you get the feeling they keep making plays like that. They might just get a few. Yeah, once you get one, defensive teams think they come in bunches. He'll get this complete to Jalen Rager. And he stopped right at the 25 after a gain of five. So the completion there, and CD, as we know, trying to defend against an NFL quarterback, that's one thing. Trying to defend against a mobile NFL quarterback, that's quite another. What's the plan here defensively? 
Well, the pass rush has to still try and get to him, and especially the guys on the edge, but they're going to go maybe a, a, a count slower, right? They want to make sure they don't get too far upfield where he steps up and takes off through a lane. The same is true for those interior guys as well. So you've got to change it up with him, try and keep him hemmed into the pocket, and occasionally you throw a spy on him, a fast linebacker or one of your extra defensive backs who can dance with him a little bit if he takes off and runs. Here's the Eagles' new punter for 2021, Aaron Sipos, to punt it away. DeAndre Carter back deep. 37 yards on the punt with no return. And it will be Washington football now with a first and 10. Now Washington going to retake the field for drive number two. And they'll be looking to make this a two-score advantage. Had the touchdown on their first drive, Charles. Hey, they can get up two scores here on the road. That's a heck of a start. And not only have they thought about it, I wonder if they visualized it. I remember playing, and they used to turn the lights out in our meeting room and run through a situation like this and say, just think about what it would be like to be up on the road and take the crowd out of it. Maybe they did some of that. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Now Heineke. That's out to the flat for Gibson. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. And a nice gain and a broken tackle along the way. And really, we shouldn't be surprised, should we? That's what runners do, especially the best ones. They break tackles and gain extra yardage. To throw is Heineke. Completes it to Samuel. And he'll go out of bounds, it looks like, right at the 40. Someone sharp in this game. I mean, a touchdown pass in the first drive and comes right back, and he's flinging it around really well here. A really nice throw there to pick up the first down. You, you kind of just feel a laser focus and confidence about him, and I think we saw that this week, didn't we? Talking to him and the coaches, they felt good about his performance coming up. Yeah, I was really impressed with that last practice we saw when they went through two-minute drill, when they went through all the different situations. The ball hardly hit the ground, and I thought, yeah, he might be locked in for this one. Javon Hargrave there on the stop. Well, in every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown, so a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later, and let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. Now a throw here to his running back. It'll go down as a gain of six, and that's going to make it third down and less than a yard. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Got his target, Samuel. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. Now he's going to drop this one down to Gibson. Well, this crowd does not like that call understandable reaction from them that's their team that the penalty is going against but you and I both know they're going to take care of the quarterback so the yellow flag came out and that leads to a new set of downs for this offense first and ten from the shotgun it's Heineke and he'll find his tight end Seals Jones a gain of six there on first Ran a perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. 
That's Samuel caught left side. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. Had the offense humming on the first drive. Not much has changed here on drive number two. No, and I think a lot of times confidence just really kicks in for a team. They may have been confident going into the game, but once you prove it on a drive, it's hard to get out of that mindset, isn't it? And look, let's face it. We can always lock in on the skill position, guys. For those big fellas up front, they're really making this offense go early in the game. The quick slant caught. A gain of seven that time. Second goal. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Good yardage on first down. Now can they punch it in on second and goal? Gibson, no signal, and now they say he did not get in. He is stonewalled at the one. They try to get the nose of the football across to no avail, and now it's third and goal. So they held him out on second down, and now here's third and goal. Now Heineke. And they're going to get to him, a sack. Sack back at the nine-yard line. Javon Hargrave, the D tackle, getting the sack. You and I both know we're into a whole new realm of football because we're not just looking at tendencies anymore. We're looking at analytics, and I've got to think the analytics on third and one say run the football. And his kick is good. And the lead moves to 10 zip. Well, I don't know if they would have gone for it on fourth and goal anyway, but the sack on third down pretty much made their mind up for them. You're exactly right about that. And this is a tough place on the field to take a sack because, as you just noted, it took the decision making away from them. Now they have to go for a field goal instead of potentially going for it. So after the made field goal, 10-0 here early as the kick's away. Taken in at the three. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. So back onto the field, here come the Eagles for their second drive. They'll look to get something started. They need to, down 10-0 early as they've got it first and 10. They will run for the first time with Miles Sanders. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Now you're down early. How do you get back in the game? Maybe establish the run. I think they're trying to do that. Now I'm with you on that one. And what I like about the message is that there's no panic from the head coach. He's already told his offensive coordinator, let's run the football. Let's get things settled down a little bit and find our way back into this game. I know we're in the era of the mobile quarterback, but there's still an element of surprise when that position keeps the football, and what a nice gain on that play. On first and 10, it's Sanders. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking. And that's from the offensive lineman creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before that he always told his runners, run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. On second and very short, Hurts. He finds his tight end, Goddard. That's complete. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play, and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. 
They'll throw on first down with Hurts. Flush to his right, and he works his way past the line of scrimmage and then slides to a halt. Give him a couple on the scramble, it's second down. Now how about that play? He took a possible negative and turned it into positive yardage and slid down to avoid taking a big shot. Excellent job getting down and avoiding the big hit. They go play action with her, and he cannot avoid the pressure as the Washington pass rush gets home. Call it a loss of five, a big sack to bring up third down. Now they tried to go with a little play action there, but nobody on the defensive side bit. Yeah, they adjusted in time and in a big way and ultimately got the sack on offense. Sometimes you're running play action just to set up a certain blocking technique. In this case, none of it worked. Flushed out right, and he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. Five yards that time out of the scramble, but now they're looking at a fourth down situation. I thought he did a pretty good job there to get back what he could, but let's face it, that sack on second down, talk about throwing a wrench into the works. It certainly did. And he did everything he could there, trying to pick up some positive yardage, and he did, but not enough. 10-0 the score after one on EA Sports. Now second quarter action from Philadelphia, and it's the Eagles in possession. And I don't think this has the carry. It does not. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. A 55-yard attempt, normally you'd say well within his range. A little surprised he came up short. And he knew it immediately, didn't he? They are so calibrated, aren't they? They can tell the touch, the feel. When they put the foot to the ball, whether it's going to be good or not, he knew immediately he didn't have that one. Heineke now looking to throw on first down. He'll dump that off to Gibson, complete. Able to corral him right at the midfield stripe following that sparkling display of footwork we saw. It's funny, throughout the time that we've been together when we talk with running backs about the ability to catch the ball, their eyes light up when they talk about open field and having one-on-one -on -one matchups, don't they? Yeah, they do. And that's the reason why, what we just saw, shedding those tackles, and that's what they're used to doing. It is, and it starts at the beginning of the play, one-on-one -on -one matchup of someone trying to cover them, but they also like those one-on-ones downfield after the catch when they're running with the ball. They think they're going to win those, too. It'll be a gain of five, and that'll bring up what looks to be a third and in inch can't be more than a half a foot. And now it's a bootleg with Heineke. Got an open man, finds Gibson. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. So things are definitely going right for them here in the first half. Pick a down, any down, even third down, no problem. They get a connection there and pick up a fresh set of downs, continuing to move the ball. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Heineke. And that one caught. It's the rookie, Deami Brown. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Barney sold the go route really well. Thought he was going deep, then curled it back inside for a nice completion. DBs love when they pump the brakes, don't they? Yeah, that's really that's really a whole <laughs> cool. lot of fun. It's almost like you said, listen, if you're going to sell the go, just go. Well, let's see who's faster. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Over the middle, he gets it to Gibson. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. They'll contain him to just four, second down. So five plays on this drive, Charles, all passes, all completions. And just like that, they're in the red zone. And don't you think the playbook opens up a little bit more now? Because all they've done is throw the football. If you want to run it now, you may very well have them fooled. And that is caught. Touchdown, Washington. Curtis Samuel. There to make the grab. And Washington going to add on to their lead. And he's a little bit on the shorter side as a receiver. Maybe sometimes for the defense, tough to find the little guys, right? Yeah, sometimes they get lost in the traffic. But usually what it means is that rather than just winning with height, 
or even speed, they use their quickness to find a way to get open. Well, tall, short, wide, skinny, whatever, there it results in a touchdown. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And he's only going to make it to the 13-yard line and no further. Now Philadelphia ready to get going on offense again. And they had compiled a pretty long drive last time. Unfortunately, though, it ended with no points after the missed field goal. And that can hurt the psyche of a team because as they drove downfield, you know you're never supposed to count points in your mind until they go up on the board. But let's face it, we've been there. We've seen teams before. They were counting on those points. They didn't get them. Can they come back now, start over again, and grind it out? Two yards the loss, second and 12. Yeah, another negative play in an early down situation. This one to start the drive. You're putting a lot of pressure on your quarterback to bail you out when you're in second and long yardage. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. Now flags come in here. Looked like one of the Eagles might have moved. And that false start penalty certainly not helping their cause here. Second down and long. Hurts. Open man is Goddard, the tight end. And he'll be out of bounds up past the 10-yard line. Call it a gain of six on the play. And that'll bring up a third and 11 situation. Here's Hertz to throw. Escaping the pressure right. Under the category of obvious, you hate giving up a first down, a third and long. And somehow, he finds his way downfield and picks it up. Yeah, if you look at the coverage defensively, oh, this is great. But no one accounted for him at the quarterback spot. At some point, you actually have to tackle him and get him on the ground short of the first down marker. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Now, Brandon, that's the way you want to run the football. There should almost be quote bubbles above the offense right now. Bam, boom, biff. That's how they feel good about moving the football. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. Hurts a handoff to Sanders. And this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half to about the 39. But that's all about doing the dirty work right there defensively. Second and short yardage, that's all about plugging those gaps, not giving the running back a crease to run through. It has a nice job to hold him just a couple and force a third down. The Eagles on third down, just one for three thus far. This time they face a third and two. Throwing his hurts. And he's got his man. It's the tight end, Goddard. And he is going to have an Eagles first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And that's well executed there on third down. And I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QBs love to make that easy throw. And they hooked up there for a first down. On first and 10, it's Hurts. And this is caught by Watkins. A good rally to the football keeps him to only a yard and it's second down. Can you do any more work or make it more dramatic for not much gain than what we just saw there? Did you see how his toes got down? Tip-tap, tip-tap, got him down. 
But what'd he get out of it? He sold the sizzle. He just had no steak. <laughs> I mean, was it one yard? Yeah, you plays like that, you at least expect a first down there, just one yard. And the Washington pressure gets to him. He will go down. Jamin Davis charging hard from that linebacker spot, and he drops him for a loss of 11. Like the footwork back there, I thought he did a pretty good job of evading that first wave of players. Tried to buy a little extra time out of the pocket, but in the end, oh, that was a tough one. Yeah, winds up getting buried for the loss. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Hurts fumbles it. Offensively lucky they're able to keep the football, but now fourth down, so they'll have to boot it away. I do think, though, they're going to look at this as a positive. One, they recovered the fumble, so they retained possession. But two, being able to punt it changes field position for them. Imagine if that turnover takes place there. Now your defense has to go onto the field and try and hold. Instead, they get a little breathing room. A 40-yard punt, no return, and possession will switch hands first and 10. And here we go on the next drive for Washington. They have to be pleased with the way that they move the football thus far. And why wouldn't they be? Two touchdowns on a field goal in their first three possessions. They're playing so well right now, the field goal probably feels like a disappointment. A good starting spot for Washington as they come up first and 10 at their 35-yard line. Looking to throw, Heineke, quick slant to Brown. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. So many times in my career, I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing. But as long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can live with that. But if you're going to give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch, then your defense is going to be in a lot of trouble. On first and 10, it's Gibson. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. From the 45 on second down. Heineke, nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Much like a running back going through the line, quarterbacks have to be aware of protecting the football as well. He left it exposed that time, wound up having it knocked free, but fortunately had an alert teammate who was able to get it. Third down, Heineke. Got a man, it's Brown. And a nice job there defensively. They get him to the ground, short of the first, right around the 42. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. So on fourth down, Washington going to call on Tress Way to punt it away. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. And this will be out of bounds at the what here? The 12-yard line. Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. It was still more than a minute to go in the half. Time to try to mount a drive. And I would think that they would have to. This is today's NFL. you got to push it whenever you get an opportunity. You can never have enough points with the high-powered offenses that you face. And analytics will tell you, try and score when given the opportunity. Uh, throwing here to start the drive as they connect left side. And he'll be taken down, but they've got this one up to the 35-yard line. The Eagles going to take the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. First and 10 here, and you know, if they could just get three out of this, there's something about narrowing it to a two-score game at half that makes it feel like much less of an obstacle. 
He'll fire deep for Rager. And at the seven-yard line, the catch is made. Now the Eagles will use the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. This is first and goal, and a golden chance to get a score back here before halftime. Hurt sets up to throw it. Eluding the pressure right. And he'll get this down inside the five to the four before he's out of bounds. He'll get three yards on the scramble there at second down. Ask any pass rusher, and they'll tell you, any quarterback who lines up every time and goes straight back in the pocket, that's who they want. But when they have to deal with a Jalen Hurts who may come at them from any angle and can get outside of the pocket and run, that's a nightmare for anybody who has to rush the quarterback. And I love Jalen Hurts. He will find Smith in the end zone. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Four yards on the touchdown grab. And the Eagles get a late score here in the final minute of the first half. The way this one was going, you just got the sense they needed something before half. They've at least got something on the board now. Still trailing, but a good sign. That takes me back to our preseason tour of NFL camps. You remember we, we talked with that one coach who said his emphasis this year was scoring in the last two minutes yeah. of a half, heading into the locker room. This hits it right there. Take that momentum, take that good feeling, and take the locker room, regroup, and start over. They got it here. They did indeed. A lot of football, full half to be played. Touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. DeAndre Carter returning it. And he won't quite make it to the 25. Washington going to go on offense now late in this first half. And with a two-score lead already, they may just look to get this thing to the locker room. on first down it's complete to Brown right side and Washington now going to use the first of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play Washington going to go on offense now late in this first half and with a 17-7 lead maybe they're just looking to get into the locker room here's a second and two now from the 33 Heineke now. He's going deep for Brown. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there. Trying to take a shot, but it's third down. Certainly no lack of aggressiveness here. They were hoping for the home run play to get them six points. They're hoping for a catch, maybe a call. But they figure they can at least get into field goal range with a completion. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. Throwing Heineke. He'll check that down to Gibson out of the backfield. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39 yard line. Final play of the half here Heineke. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past we the 50. This. So we have come upon halftime, and it's the visiting group from Washington who are out on top. As we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach! So Washington in a good spot. They've got the lead. They will get the football as the second half gets underway. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. 
Out come the Eagles now as he'll go on offense first here in the third quarter. And right out of the gate, they face what you think could be a pretty important drive. I would say so. You know, they're down two scores. That's not the end of the world. It wasn't the strongest of first halves, but for them to start clawing back, they've got to start putting a little pressure on that defense, start cutting into this deficit. You can't have three and outs and expect to get that done. And that throw behind his man. He missed him incomplete. Well, defensively, they haven't let him just sit in the pocket and get comfortable, and that's opposite a lot of game plans in today's NFL. Ordinarily, you're trying to keep the quarterback hemmed in. In this case, they brought the heat, and if he flushes out, they're fine with that, and they force another incompletion. To throw again on second down. Hurts. Hurts fumbles it. Fortunate to get that football back, because trailing here in the second half, last thing they needed was to lose the possession. And the word I think of here is opportunity, because it could have been lost there, their chance to score points. But the opportunity for the defense was to go ahead and really close this game down if they were able to get possession. After the sack, they'll come up now third and long. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see them run the ball here just to try and get some space. He finds his man complete. It's Watkins. An incredible play there. They do get big yardage, but they're still stopped. The yard or two short, and it's fourth down. But I think that we all figured when he caught it that short of the marker that the defense almost relaxed and said, we got this covered, and then all of a sudden, space to run after the catch, and now they're screaming, somebody get him down. Fortunately, they got to him and forced the fourth down. And on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. It's a 42-yard punt. They keep him to just a yard on the return. And out will come the offense as they take over. First possession of the second half now for Washington. First and ten, Heineke. Eagle pressure, too much this time. Down he goes. It'll be a loss of seven on the sack, and it brings up second. Well, partner, we know they came out of the locker room down on the scoreboard, but I will guarantee you the defensive side of the ball got super emotional. They can come out and play with aggressiveness, with fury, because they don't have to be quite as precise, and it paid off for them on that play, didn't it? Sure did. Excellent play, really setting the tone for this third quarter. And nothing doing here is this time to run. Maybe gets him back to the line of scrimmage, but that's it. No gain on the play this time, and it'll be a third and long situation coming up. to throw it. Slings this deep from McLaurin. Oh, not sure he saw the linebacker there. As that's batted down and incomplete. I like the fact that he took the shot deep downfield. Even if you don't get the catch, maybe you get a defensive penalty and pick up the yardage that way. Here's Tressway now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Call that a 45-yard punt, just two yards there on the return. And the Eagles will have it taking over first and 10. Philadelphia's offense ready to go again. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. Two yards, the loss, second and 12. Well, we saw a lot of negative plays that resulted in plenty of lost yardage in the first half, and that trend is continuing here. So the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. Another run with Sanders. And hard running's going to get him over the 40 to the 42. That's what they needed. It's an eight-yard gain, and now third and four suddenly doesn't look so bad. Back to 
throw here. It's caught by Sanders. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. And the screen only good for three that time, and it'll bring up a fourth down. Caught that look from you there, partner. I think we're on the same page on that one. Just his first catch, I think we both thought he'd be a little more active in the passing game. Let's see if that's the start of them trying to get the ball to him a little bit more here in the second half. And the punt team on now as this one's sent away. And a nice job here to down this one right on the five-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line. Absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five. Superb. They'll start on the ground with Gibson. It's a first down and more for Gibson. And all the way up to the 33-yard line. Brandon, I think you and I were both raised the same way in the game of football. You run to set up the pass, but I think we've discovered in this NFL, a lot of teams pass to set up the run. And that's what they've done throughout this game. They've aired it out, thrown it around the yard. Now they've come back to the running game, and they find a way to be successful with it. Heineke now looking to throw on first down. Throw right side is going to be caught by Samuel. A gain of six there on first. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to it? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. On second down, a run with Gibson. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. 41 yards rushing for him now on just six carries to this point. Antonio Gibson is an absolute dart with the ball in his hands, and he can make you miss, and he can run over you. Took a little while to crack the starting lineup as a rookie, but boy, was he sensational when he did. Went for 115 yards and three scores in a Thanksgiving Day cloppering of the Dallas Cowboys. And Washington, they felt like they had a real find when they took him in the third round last year, number 66 overall and he justified their decision. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll bring up a second in just about a few inches here. That coach is always harp on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end, let him get some rack. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? On second down now, it's Gibson. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendency. Stay with what you are, stay with who you know, and go get the first down. That's exactly what they did. They'll run. It's Gibson. This will be a gain of about eight to the 27-yard line. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. Eight yards the tally on that first down run. Here's second and two. And they go play action. Now Heineke. Now he's going to drop this one down to Gibson, and he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. Well, they certainly had success throughout this contest, getting him the ball in the passing game, and there he picks up another first down. Whatever they saw going into this one, they've been able to capitalize on it, and no adjustment has been made to take it away. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. And he's going to go down, back at the 27-yard line. He's sacked. Javon Hargrave in there to get him yet again. That is his third sack tonight. They can't figure him out. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. Another try after the first down sack. Heineke, and that's incomplete. Antonio Gibson, the intended target, and it's third down. Well, listen, when you've got the lead, 
There's absolutely no sense trying to fit a ball in where you shouldn't. You can see the coaching in his head taking place on that play because he saw he had a receiver in the area. He just put it well over his head out of harm's way. Third and long for Heineke. Open man is Samuel, complete. Just to find out, pick up the leads to fourth down. Brandon, a good idea there on third down. Run a little clear out and hope you can get your receiver the ball coming across the formation. Nice design, but well played defensively, and they stop him well short. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. He connected on his first. This time it's 39 yards away. And this one is right through. And that will open the lead up now to 20 to 7. So the lead grows here incrementally, but I think the way their defense is playing, you feel okay with just getting three. They've definitely been stout so far, but now that could all change because if one guy gets loose for 70 yards, this is a different game. But as it stands, field goals are good. Just keep adding to that lead. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And he'll be brought down shy of the 20, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone, not a good one. And out now come the Eagles. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets his football out shy of the 30 to the 29. 43 yards rushing now on eight carries for him so far. Right back to Sanders on first down. And he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here. Second down. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. What that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. One quarter remains here as we wrap up the week on a Monday night. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And welcome back. We are in the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia. Now second and eight at the 32-yard line. It's the Eagles behind on the scoreboard, but with the football here as we start the fourth quarter. Hertz gets this to Sanders. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. All right, this is the time of the game where they're down a couple of scores. And they've really got to get some yards in chunks. And they know the defense doesn't want to give those up. They've got to find a way to take them anyway. Now the question is, can they string a few of those together? But first down, Hurts. Flush to his right. And he'll take this beyond the line of scrimmage as he slides to a hole. He'll get three yards on the scramble there. It's second down. Yeah, he only gets a few yards on first and ten, but he's better off doing that than throwing an incompletion or even worse, an interception. Second and six. No, scratch that. Second and seven. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. He'll fire it deep for Rager. And that will be incomplete. Tried to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. This defense is continuing to contest every deep ball that is thrown downfield. And look, it doesn't matter whether you're playing man or zone. Eventually, that becomes man on man. And you've got to trust yourself and go up at that moment of truth and make a play on the football. Hurts. 
Looking left side for Watkins, and he's got it. And he's going to have an Eagles first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. On first and ten, it's Hurts. And the timing a bit off that time as that one falls to the ground. Certainly appeared to take away his first read, and by the time he tried to look elsewhere and find an open target, the coverage was too good. That one falls incomplete. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Here's Hurts to throw. And he cannot avoid the pressure as the Washington pass rush gets home. Jonathan Allen able to drop him that time for his second sack of the evening. Well, nothing takes a start to have a good drive quite like a big loss on a sack, does it? Now, now they're looking at a third and long, and suddenly the momentum shifted to the other side of the football. And old Mo is a very, very fickle man. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. We're going to give out a little applause on that play. It has to go to the defense. More good work by them. They've taken away the passing lanes all game long, and you can see the frustration that it's causing because he just about threw that one into the first row. The Eagles send out their punter now as he'll come on for his fifth kick of the night. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. The Washington offense set to take over. Now there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. A first down throw for Heineke. Middle of the field, he's got McLaurin. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. Another nice pick up through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect him to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. A handoff for Gibson. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. Heineke's throw into the hands of McLaurin. That catch good for five. It's third down. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible. Hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. Washington on third down. Five out of nine thus far. Here it's third and two. To throw is Heineke. A throw left side caught here by the tight end Bates. Only able to gain a couple there. And that's going to make it fourth down. Well, it wasn't a big strike, but that completion put them in really great range. What do we have now, fourth and inches? Yeah, it's not more than a half a foot. You know what I would do here. You would always go for it. <laughs> I'm one of those guys. And now the putter, Tress Way, as he sends this one away. And this one hits at the three and then bounds into the end zone for a touchback. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. Their defense was able to force the punt. That's the good news. But this is still a two-score game, and they need points on this drive and in a relatively quick manner. Hurts and the Eagles come up here first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And a big loss here as he's taken down. The defense rising to the challenge and setting him back on the sack. Well, collectively as a defense, Charles, I think if you get four sacks a game, you're feeling really good. Now they have six as a unit. And that type of a number 
it's just staggering because there's so many ways to try and counteract it. But in this case, they've got no answers for this unrelenting pressure coming at their quarterback. And he'll take this forward only up to about the seven. He'll get three, but it leaves him with a big hole here on third and very long. Not the start to the drive they were hoping for. That run doesn't get him much at all. No, not at all. That leaves him with third and long, which means you've got to dial up something pretty good. Think your best player with a play that he likes to run best. Throwing his hurts. And on the catch right side, this is Sanders. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 15. That'll bring up fourth down. They wind up getting eight yards, but they needed more than that. That's a nice design there. But sometimes, though, you get so many blockers out ahead of you, they kind of slow you down and force you to adjust. You always appreciate guys trying to help you, but maybe one less there could have turned this into a bigger game. They're going on fourth down with Hurts. Looking here for Smith downfield. And this one is incomplete. Boy, it looked like he had it and dropped it. And now the football's going to go over, already being placed at the 15-yard line. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. And he takes it in. Touchdown, Washington. Terry McLaurin, his second touchdown of the night. And Washington is able to stretch their lead. Well, this, of course, set up by the stop a moment ago on fourth down. And now that might be the score that puts this one officially out of reach. And it's a tough one because your hands are tied when you're losing in the fourth quarter because you know you've got to make something happen. They couldn't pick up the first down. And after that, the air just went right out of the balloon. And you knew you were looking at a defeated team. You know, sometimes the guy on the defensive side of the ball, he just has a good feeling or a good read. And he unleashed his defense on that one. Boy, they stopped them in a big one. Yeah, I hate to be cliche, but sometimes we overanalyze. They just have more want. Looked like they had more <laughs> want right there. More want and more people to the ball. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Taken at the goal line. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. Philadelphia's offense ready to give us another look. And this offense last time turned it over, went for it on fourth, didn't get it. They're lucky, though, because no points against the team on the board, but we'll see how they respond. Yeah, they've got to get a lot of credit to their defensive teammates, don't they? They had their backs on that last series, and because they did so, that allows the coach to still stay aggressive on offense and maybe go for it again in a similar situation. I was going to say, maybe makes that offense feel good, but when you know you've got a defense making stands like that. Yeah, that'll loosen up things a little bit, won't it? Maybe you'll play a little bit better the next time you have the ball. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. From the 24, Hurts. Flushed out right, and he gets this up just shy of the 30 to the 29 before he's out of bounds. That was an excellent job of recognizing the situation. His first read wasn't there. Heck, his second read wasn't there. But he bought himself a little extra time scrambling out of the pocket, got to the sticks, and picked up the first down. They'll throw on first down with Hurts. He's going to look deep for Watkins. He's got a man complete. And he's a long ways into Washington territory before hitting the turf. 
A big play there for Philly. Well, partner, that's how you make a long drive suddenly. Not so long anymore. One big play, and they're already in field goal range with designs on getting more than that. So the field flips here as they'll go to work at the 20 now on first and 10. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Open right side, complete to Rager. Touchdown, Eagles! Jalen Rager, a 20-yard touchdown. And the Eagles have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. The fourth quarter touchdown there, back to a two-score game, but time is not their ally. No, it's not, partner. They still have a pulse, but it's probably a little weak right now. A lot of things have to go right in these final two minutes plus for them. I think they have to be thinking onside kick here, and we know how difficult those are to recover. Elliott good on the extra point, and they're able to cut this deficit down to 12. Two scores down, three timeouts left. Still a chance if they can somehow get this one back. And this is going to be covered up by Washington. The well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it they do actually recover the ball which is what we saw here i just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number kind of like when the coaches tell us well when you score on special teams 93 percent of the time you win the game i'm still waiting to see that number is empirical yeah give him four yards there it'll be second and six defensively no doubt they need a quick stop offensively here maybe do you put it in the air on second down or do you go ahead and keep it on the ground keep that clock moving a lot of people would ask that question partner because sometimes throwing the ball might actually be the path of least resistance but in this case it's a matter of trust. How much do you trust your quarterback? Because you throw the ball and it goes awry, you really don't look smart as a coach. Yeah, and then you stop that clock. On second down, here's Gibson again. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. So fresh out of the two-minute warning, and here's another timeout taken with 1.55 remaining. Now this is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. They'll go again with Gibson. And he is going to have the first down, and that is going to suck the life right out of this crowd. And now with 1.52 to go, we get another pause in the action. A timeout here defensively. And not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. The Eagles will take their third and final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Here's a give to Gibson. Stopped at the 24-yard line after a gain of five. I think we can safely say that those types of players are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. The Eagles call on the extra defensive back here as they prepare for a stop on third down. Looking to throw, Heineke. And 
too much juice. It'll be out of bounds, incomplete. There is something to a game plan with trying to keep a defense honest with a guy with that type of speed. You do so. Send him deep. Try to throw some air under it and hope you connect downfield. On that play, they were unsuccessful. So now the field goal unit trots out there for the third time tonight. From the left hash, this will be a 41-yarder. And his kick is right there. It's good. And that will extend their lead even further. So they settle for just the three. But clearly right now, anything helps trying to salt this one away in the fourth. Without a doubt, obviously a touchdown probably would have been the final nail to finish this thing off. But they still ate up time, got points. So while it's not mission accomplished, it's darn close. Is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone and ultimately cannot get this out to the 25 yard line as he's dropped at the 23. Hurts and the Eagles now down by 15. 53 ticks to go. It's an extremely tall order in front of them, but they've got the ball with a first down. Hurt sets up to throw it. Into the hands of Sanders. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. So the completion results there in nine yards. And it'll be second and about a yard to go for the first. Hurt's trying to hurry up the offense. Throwing again on second down. Hurts. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. Picked by Kendall Fuller, and he brings it back to right around the 26-yard line. Washington about to close this one out as they are down to a knee. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right? Just us against the world and get it done. <laughs> How happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something. And they, <laughs> they did in this one. A road win in the National Football League. Charles, you never take that for granted, no matter who you're playing, no matter where you're playing. You take it and you run with it. <laughs> and you know you primed the pump all week in your own home facility. No one thinks we can do this. Only people who believe are right here in this room. And then you go on the road, band together, and get it done.